So <laughs> it's hard to follow Bill always. Uh, when I uh, grew up in a small rural community, uh, it took a while for things to uh, took a while for things to get to us, just like slides. Um, and uh, you know, this is a much cooler Corey from the '80s, and his French rolling jeans didn't get to my community until five years after they were cool. And that was just part of being, being in a rural community. And, and the same thing happened with electrification. You know, we have utilities in the early 1900s that decided there's no money in, in running uh, electric wires out there. So the REA solved that problem, you know, it, and, and it changed things overnight. People went from outdoor bathing to standing and staring at the, the other people working, right? And, and the, the goal really was that this created a, a new day for rural communities. It allowed them to prosper and it gave them a lot of, a lot of power. So right here we have one of these is a uh, abject failure on the left. And the other one is a really good tale of people coming together to overcome greed. One of these is you know, still going strong and the other one's holding America back. In that scenario, we have competition versus cooperation. And in competition, only a few win. You know, there's, there's this guy in front, that person, and everybody else is standing off on the sidelines. And in, in cooperation, we're all pulling the same uh, together to work, work together to, to do something. So electrification's coming. Where is the money going? It's going along the corridors, which is interstates, which is doubling down on a policy that failed a lot of people in the first uh, run. You know, interstates caused a lot of problems in black and brown communities and harmed a lot of people. So the solution to this uh, broadband 2.0 is to create electric vehicle charging cooperatives. It allows EV owners and local communities to come together and build a product that helps enable the, the EV revolution. It's not for profit. And co-ops, they pool money, they put money to work. We're pooling money from communities and EV owners and we're putting that money to work in those local communities and driving investment in places where you're never gonna see it if we're only focused on profits. There's a lot of stakeholders out there. And my grandma was one too. Um, but, <laughs> But all these people can come together and work together versus doing their own thing on their own. And, and really that's what it's about. Bringing all these people, finding a common purpose and working. So what we do is we, we find a district level, we get, get their picture built, right? And then we, we go to the general fund and we fill it up. Whenever we have the district created, we were essentially going to the general fund to, to get money and, and you know, build that, that, that area. So the best way to sell these shares is really at the point of sale. You're buying an electric vehicle. These, these vehicles, when you purchase them, if you have an electric vehicle charging uh, 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 share with it, it becomes a, more, uh, a better investment for you. And this is all about creating a positive feedback loop. As more EV owners come on, we can build more, more stations in the rural areas. We drive investment and keep this positive feedback loop going. So there's always give and take. And, and we have special status because we're providing a public good. We, we, dis, we deserve to get special treatment because we're doing stuff that no one else wants to do. And, and the, the key here is that we're solving a problem that no one else is gonna solve. And this is economic development. You go to your doctor to talk about ED, or you can come to me to talk about ED. And, and really economic development is, is, is allowing people to get off the beaten path, to get off those, those interstates and start spending money in areas that need it. So, the pricing signals should, should reflect who's actually putting money into this. The EV owners, the shareholders, they should get free charging. People in rural districts, they should get at cost charging. Other people, you can pay what you pay on the open market, right? And, and really there's a technology that, that does enable this and this battery infused technology. This is a free wire boost charger. They're already doing this stuff. It's good to the grid, it's quick to deploy and they're, and they're already doing this stuff uh, and networking them with Voltus and doing a lot of work with those folks. It's important that this is owned locally because local electricians are gonna go out there and service it. You're not gonna roll a truck from 200, 200 miles away to go fix this stuff and have it be down for half, half a day or two days and really have a bunch of people mad at you. There's a lot of opportunities. Utilities gonna look at this like it's Costco. Everybody's gone to Costco, gotten a hot dog, right? They don't make any money on that. And utilities don't need to make money on, on DC fast charging in rural areas. It's just an enabling technology. It allows us to move forward. And if we mess this up, we're all gonna have a bad time. Because that means EVs are not gonna move as quickly as they could. We're, we're gonna be stuck in, in driving ICE vehicles for another 10 years when we shouldn't be doing it. And I think we really can do this. 
because we've done this before. We did it with REA. We can do it with rural charging cooperatives. And we can get it right the first time. That's my speech.